Hey everyone, April Dunham here. Today I'm going to walk through how you can do pagination inside your Power Apps galleries. This was actually a request from one of my YouTube channel followers. So I'm going to walk through how to accomplish this in Power Apps, but first, here's the intro. Before I dive in, I'm going to preface this with saying that there's not a particularly easy way to do this pagination for your galleries. It's going to be very formula heavy, so hopefully it's not too complex and you can follow along fairly easily. First, let's take a look at what we're trying to accomplish and what I mean by pagination. This pagination will come in handy when you're trying to surface up a lot of records inside your galleries and power apps. I'm sure that in other applications that you've used before, you've seen this kind of pagination where it'll break out your data into bite-sized chunks. So typically you'll see something like this where you have, you know, page one out of total of three pages and you'll have back and forward arrows. So right now I can see there's three total pages and it's limiting the number of records to whatever fits on the screen. In this case, there's about six records that fit on this mobile screen. So the goal here is to be able to click through the different pages and see all of the records in your gallery. If you caught my beautiful Power Apps talk at Ignite, you'll know that one of the things I talked about was reducing scrolling. This pagination is really a great way to accomplish that. Your scrolling is reduced and limited to just what fits on the screen and you click through the number of records instead. All right, now let's dive in and see how to make this happen. The first thing that we need to do is get the records that we want to surface up in the gallery. To do that, we're going to go to our app in the OnStart property. I'm going to take the data from our database, in this case it's a SharePoint list, and put that into a local collection. I'm using the clear collect formula for that, and I'm creating a collection called inspections, and I'm doing some sorting ahead of time on my data source to sort by an inspection date field in descending order so that I get the most recent inspections first. The second thing that I'm doing here on the OnStart is setting a global variable called total records. And what I want to do here is get the total number of items in my data source. So I'm going to do a count rows formula and point that to the collection that I just created, which is pointing to my safety inspections database. I need this total records to be able to do the pagination and you'll see why a little bit later on. Now that we have our data source into a collection and a count of the total number of records, we'll go to the screen where we have our gallery surfaced, which in this case is the landing screen. And we're going to go to the on visible property. In this on visible property, we need to set two context variables. The first will serve as our counter so that we can page through the items in our gallery. Initially, when this page is visible, we want to set this counter to the total number of items that you can have in your gallery. If we look at my gallery here, we'll see that we can have six rows of data before we have to scroll. To dynamically get that number, we can take your gallery, get the height, and divide that by its template height, and do a round down to get the total number of rows in the gallery. You'll see below that we have a second variable which is using that exact same formula, except I'm calling this variable gallery row total. Since the page counter variable will be changing as we click the back and forward arrows, we need a constant which has whatever that gallery row total is to reference in our formulas later on. So that's the purpose of this inspection gallery row total variable here. Now that we have those, let's take a look at what we need to set the items property in our gallery to. Let's go here to my gallery inspections, which is what's holding this data here, and look at the items property. The formula for this is pretty simple. We're using the last in and first in functions to point that to our data source. So first in the first in, we're gonna point that to the inspections collection that we created in the app on start and we're going to tell it to return the number of rows that is in our page counter. So right now, when the app is initially loaded, that value is going to be set to six. So it's gonna return the first six rows, but then it's going to get the last of these first six records. And then you have to tell it the last, how many rows of do you wanna return in the last end function here. And so that is gonna be our constant. 
So we're always going to be getting the last six rows, which is what will fit in our gallery from whatever this first in formula turns out to be. So since we're doing this in batches of six in this case, initially this page counter will be six. When we click the next button, you'll see that I have a variable where I'm outputting that counter. It's going to be 12. So we're repenting the total number of rows here to that page counter each time that we click the next button. So coming back to this formula, as we click the next button, in this case our page counter will go up to 12. So we're getting the first 12 items from inspections, but only returning the last six, which is our constant. So you can see as we keep clicking the arrow, it's gonna go up from 12. When we click next again from 12, it'll go up to 18. So this is going to get the first 18 records, but only return the last six, and so on and so forth. So now the only thing we have to do is to wire up these next and previous buttons here so that it will return the appropriate number of records for a gallery. Now this is where the formulas get a little complex. Let's take a look at the next button first. All right, let's just break this down real quick. We have to do two total things. We need to set our page counter variable and we need to set that inspection gallery row total variable that we've set in our on visible property of our screen. We need to keep updating those variables so that it knows which records to return. So the first thing we're doing here is an if statement. This next button should only be clickable in function if our page counter is less than the total number of records. That's how we know, you know, once we reach the end, so it won't keep trying to click through the records. So if that evaluates to true, then we first are going to update our inspection gallery row total. Now this is needed because there can be instances where you're not going to have an even number of records. And I have a perfect case for this right now. In my data source itself, I only have 14 records. Now we're doing this in batches of six right now. So it would go from six to 12 to 18. 18 is four more records. So what it would do if we don't add some formula or logic in here to handle that is it will actually duplicate some records. So if you're wondering why this extra big block of code is needed, that's why. What we're doing is we're leveraging the new-ish with function in Power Apps. So we're going to do an update context and update our inspection gallery row total. And what we need to do is first see what would our page counter plus our inspection gallery row total be. So where are we at in the counter? And what happens if we add another six to that? What number does that give us? So we're gonna use the with and we're gonna put that value in a variable that we're calling new counter. If you haven't used the with function, it's actually really cool and I encourage you to check it out. Essentially what it enables you to do is reduce unnecessary variables and really helps performance. In this case, all I'm really trying to do is take my counter and add the total number of rows, so add six to that, and I wanna see what that value is and compare it to my total records. Now, without the with function, I'd have to do this in context variables and reference those. And that's really unnecessary because I don't care about that value anywhere else. I'm just using it as a comparison so that I can set this inspection gallery row total. So that's where the with function really comes into handy. So within this with function, I'm defining an object that I call new counter. And I'm setting that to my page counter plus my inspection gallery row total. So what I'm trying to do here is tell if I add six to my page counter, will that be less than or equal to my total records? So in this case, that's 14 in my data source. If it is, then that's fine. Our inspection gallery row total can remain six. But if the new counter is greater than my total records, so in this case, it would be, it would be 18 if I added another six to the 12, then I need to get a new row total so that it doesn't show duplicate records. So I'm getting a new row total here, 
by taking whatever the output of this new counter function is and subtracting it from my total number of records. So back on the app here, my counter is currently at 12 when I'm on page two. If I click it one more time, it would be 18, which is four more than the 14 records. So I would have duplicate items here. So this inspection gallery row total with formula is helping us reduce those unnecessary items. Now that we're doing that check here, we need to do the same thing to set our page counter. So we need to compare it and make sure that our page counter is less than the total records and only run this formula if that's the case. And then we're going to update our page counter using that same with function that we used above, except in our comparison here, we're gonna set our page counter variable to new counter if the new counter is less than total records, but if it's greater than the total records, we're going to set it to our page counter plus the new row total. And I will put all this code in the video description here so that you can just copy and paste this into your app. That'll handle the next button. Now let's take a look at the previous button. This formula is a little bit more simple. So when you click the previous button, I wanna set our inspection gallery row total back to the whatever the default is for our gallery. So in my case is six. So we're gonna take that same formula that we had in our landing on visible property and copy that back in here and set our variable back to that. And now we need to update our page counter. So if the page counter is less than two times our row total, we wanna set the page counter back to that inspection gallery row total. But if it's not, we'll take the page counter and subtract the number of items from that so it'll go back to the previous six items. So putting that all together, it looks like this. Now here I'm just surfacing up the variables that we're setting there. So this is the total number of records. This is our gallery row total. And this is our page counter. So you'll see here I'm on page one, and as I click through, our row total is staying six, but our page counter just added six to it to get up to 12. But then when I go to page three, the row total moves down to four, and the counter is at 14 to equal the number of records in our data source. I'll have all of these code snippets in the video description so you can copy and paste. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.